Hi, welcome to the uh, welcome to our webinar. We'll begin in just a couple minutes. Some people are still signing on, so we want to make sure we give everybody a chance to be here today. Uh, I'm Lee Kessler. I'm going to be your host on today's webinar. <clears throat> All right, looks like we continue to have people signing on, so uh, we'll begin in just about one minute. Uh, and again, this is Charity Engine's webinar um, of the Inferno Top 5, showing off some of the best features in the new Charity Engine, Charity Engine release, which we codenamed Inferno. Obviously, there is a, uh, a, questions, uh, a questions area. If anybody has any questions, feel free to, to reach out during the, uh, during the webinar. Um, put your questions in the questions module, and uh, we'll be happy to answer anything um, that you might pose, or take it offline if you have a more extended question that we could help with as well. All right. So uh, you have waited long enough. We'll get started now. Hi, everybody. I'm Lee Kessler. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Charity Engine. And I'm going to be walking you through this webinar today, which features the Inferno Top 5. Uh, these are five of the best features, or at least five of the best features we thought, in the new Charity Engine release, which we codenamed Inferno. Uh, if you've been paying attention, you know we name all of our releases after old or classic arcade games. Uh, and that's what you're seeing here. Um, so just for those who, who aren't quite aware of what we mean by the new releases, um, once a month when you log into Charity Engine, you'll notice that there is a screen, a splash screen, that says, uh, that shows some of the updates that happen, the new releases, uh, where you can click to sign up for this webinar or click and see an entire list of all of the features and fixes we put into, uh, into Charity Engine. Uh, so just to, it shows you that we are constantly working to improve the product, um, constantly thinking about how to make it better and what we can do for you. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of features and functionality. Some of them are a little bit complex. What I tried to pull out here are five of the ones that I thought were the most interesting and usable and uh, things that we actually have in here that people aren't using uh, to the level they could and might be interested to know about. So in this top five, we're going to be looking at uh, new security features in accordance with level 3 PCI certification, and I'll explain that. Uh, alternate page views with field overrides. Customizable uh, display names on peer-to-peer. -peer. Adding posts in volunteer management. And query ability in opportunities. So volunteer management and opportunities are sort of newer uh, areas of Charity Engine. Uh, and this may actually be a first-time introduction on it entirely. So the first thing we want to look at is new security features in accordance with Level 3 PCI certification. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, um, part of our efforts to provide you the best service and the best tool available is, uh, and it's particularly not only for our small clients, but uh, particularly necessary with many of our more enterprise-sized clients, um, is our uh, adherence to PCI. Uh, PCI compliance and certification. We are currently completely PCI compliant. Everything we do fits into that model. But there are levels of certification that we are uh, constantly working on. Uh, this has been a one-year process for us to achieve level three PCI certification. And we expect to be complete by the end of the summer. Um, uh, that doesn't mean you're not safe and secure. It just means that PCI has recognized the level of security going on here. And um, <clears throat> what I wanted to show you is one of the security features because it's actually pretty relevant to you. Many of the features in accordance with PCI certification you're not going to utilize, but this one is important, which is that we now have automated password generation. Um, so you'll notice on the bottom, this is a typical user account and configuration, and if you're a super user, you likely have access to this, sort of, uh, this, this part of Charity Engine, which is the ability to manage other users. Um, this is uh, the user account for my designer, Daddy. And you'll see uh, towards the bottom where the blue circle is, it says username. It shows as username. And password reset. used to be that you could manually uh, edit and change and generate passwords. That's no longer the case. Uh, part of level 3 PCI compliance, 
uh, certification dictates that that cannot be done. It needs to be um, created uh, by random and sent to the, the user direct. So now, if someone needs a password change, you go to their profile in the configuration setup, click on reset, and uh, it will send them an email. Important to note is that uh, new accounts, when you generate new users in Charity Engine, uh, they will be sent their username and password in separate emails. That also is part of PCI certification, level three certification. So uh, you can expect that if you generate a new user, they will receive first an email showing them their username and then a separate email indicating their password. Uh, those of you who are super users, you'll now be required to reset your password every 90 days. Um, but you will be alerted uh, leading up to that to remind you. And a little note, <coughs> excuse me, you cannot use the last four passwords. So uh, only uh, if, if you have a, a rotating group of four, you're going to need a rotating group of five. Uh, so that's, that's automated password generation. Again, the headline here is you can no longer manually configure passwords. Um, you have to uh, uh, have the system do it automatically. Next is alternate page views with field overrides. Alternate page views is something we've had in the system for a while. A uh, field override is the new component. But in speaking with my client services team, it became apparent that not everybody is using alternate page views in the way uh, they could. So I wanted to do a brief explanation of what exactly alternate page views is before we get into field overrides. So all page views is essentially this. It allows you to use the same form multiple times, but change certain aspects of design and messaging. So the image you see on the left uh, where it says project manager uh, manager volunteer profile. I borrowed this uh, screen from one of our uh, clients, which is the Project Man Management Day of Service, which is a national day of service done in the conjunction with Taproot. Um, and this is a form that they have, <coughs> they're having for a Houston event. Um, and you can see here that uh, it's, it's copy and then the form. Typical charity engine form. Obviously, some of you have much more complex forms, some of you less complex. This is a very basic form. Um, but in the second one, you see where it says, can you believe it? Uh, what we've done here is, we've, with an alt view, you create the same form, but with different messaging. In the third, you say an even, uh, a different one. We now have three different messages, but it's all the same form. It's not duplicating a form, nor is it uh, you know, copying an exact form. It is literally the same exact form, but it allows you to custom the message. And the reason that might apply is if you have, um, maybe you, you, the same form is being filled out by, especially in the case of PMI, um, they might have people filling it out from their Northern Virginia chapter, and they might have it, people filling it out from uh, their Maryland chapter. Uh, what they can do here is they can create the same form, but offer two views with two unique URLs. So when the, chap the Virginia chapter sends out their email, uh, then uh, they can use that link, and now people will go to this page that is sp speaking specifically to that group. So that's the great thing about alt page views, is it allows you to have the same form, but show it and present it differently to different uh, users using an even more customized URL. Now, <coughs> what we'll get here is talking about the field overrides, and you'll see on the third image, the one that says headline, there's no way this is true, um, under company name, uh, you'll notice it's, it's pre-filled in with Hewlett Packard. Um, and I'll give you an example of, and what field overrides does is it lets you make changes to specific fields on that alt page. So here it's all the same field, it's all, all the same form, they're seeing it differently. But in the case of the PMI events, let's say uh, very often they'll have a lot of volunteers from a company like Hewlett Packard and they want to know how many people are coming from that particular group. So with this alt view, we can pre-populate the data to say Hewlett Packard. And that way when people get to this form, it, the top instead of there is no way this is true, it might say something along the lines of um, welcome, thanks for volunteering everybody from Hewlett Packard. Here is your, uh, fill out the form and, and we'll get started. So that person at Hewlett Packard who's, who's championing the event will send out that unique URL. And the reason that matters and is helpful <clears throat> is because um, they're filling out the same form, which means the data is all going to the same place and is searchable by form ID. But what it does is it allows uh, 
in the case of a Hewlett Packard, some people refer to it as HP. Some people might call it HP Inc. Sometimes it's Hewlett Dash Packard. Sometimes Hewlett Packard Inc. So by doing with, with by creating a form and, and controlling the form on a particular page, uh, the field, excuse me, you are able to very uh, make it exactly what you need. Now the original intent of this design of field overrides was that <laughs> for different forms you could have a magic ask string because maybe you have the same form, you have an event, and you're going after students and executives. They're filling out the same form, um, but for donation, you might, the students, you maybe want to be offering lower donations, but for the same form, if it's going to executives, you might want them to see higher donation options. So that was the original tent, intent, was the, the ability to do that. Um, but I wanted to show this because here's a way that you can also utilize field overrides. I do want to be very clear though, it's a new feature and its significant changes may result in broken form fields. So if you really start changing all the fields around and, and doing field overrides, eventually there could be breakage because things aren't mapping properly. So I would advise you, be judicious about whether you're better off just creating a new form entirely um, because the worst thing we can do is have uh, obviously uh, 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 the wrong data in there. So we want to make sure that's safe for everybody. Um, all right. So uh, this is in the online section. Somebody asked a question, where would I see this? And you're actually going to, well, this is just explaining it. I'm now going to show you quickly how one would utilize it. Um, sorry, set it up. <coughs> so apologies, I have a little bit of a cold right now. Um, so what we're seeing here are two different views, the original project manager volunteer profile, and then can you believe it, which is an alternate page view. So to create this, these alternate page views, you'd go to configure form. This should look very familiar. Anybody who's um, managed forms before knows this interface. Uh, and particularly on the top tab, you're looking for pages. And if you've created or edited pages, this should look familiar. And on the very last right in purple, you see alternate pages. Uh, in the blue circle um, right here, we see Can You Believe It and There's No Way This, tr this Is True. This is showing us our list of uh, alt pages. So we can either manage it and do changes here, or we can create new alt pages using that button, which, <coughs> sorry, gets explained right there. I'm a little faster than my PowerPoint. Um, when you get to, if let's say we were to create one, we would then get to this field this screen, and it should look very familiar and comfortable to somebody who has created pages before. Again, if you want to do this and you're going to go in and do this, I highly recommend, um, uh, if you're going to experiment with how to do this, create duplicates of your forms, create new forms. Don't mess necessarily with your, uh, with your old forms until you're absolutely confident about how this works. Um, but if you want to play around, I highly recommend duplicate forms that are very clear that you're using it for testing. Um, You'll notice the same fields, general landing, confirmation, decline, fail, receipt, success, as you have up here. The difference is where it says alternate pages on this part, we now have field overrides. So we would name the alt field here. So can you believe it page would go here. Form, we would fill in the original form, 2947. That would go there. Or you can type the name of the form as well. Um, and then you would update it. So that's where, uh, that's where an alt page is created and managed. Now the field overrides, which lets you to make changes to the fields. <coughs> so in this case, my example was uh, creating a company name, Hewlett Packard. So first we go to that field overrides button, and then you should see all of the fields uh, normally as you'd expect right here, um, first name, last name. If you've ever dealt with the fields, then this is obviously it will look comfortable to you. If you haven't, again, play, we do this in stages. Uh, if you've never, if you're oh, brand new to Charity Engine, you might want to be slow to try to play around with tools like this. You really want to understand the mapping before you get to doing this yourself. But simply what you would do is you would um, uh, manage or <coughs> you, you would find the field you want to manage. In this case, we did company name. So we clicked on the company name. That all stays the same. And here we did default field value Hewlett Packard. And, uh, and that's what filled that in. Again, you don't want to get too into this, don't get too crazy with it, but I did want to show you this feature because I think it's really interesting and shows uh, what makes Charity Engine really uh, such a, a, a great and a flexible product and uh, custom configurable product. 
There we see the default value. Again, faster than my PowerPoint. Uh, and again, just a warning as I put up here, this is advanced. Um, I would highly recommend you really understand forms before you get into doing something like this because you're going to want to know, if you ever need to, how to backtrack and maybe remove certain form uh, changes. So customizable <coughs> display names on peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, this is a great new feature. Uh, and one of, one of, I really believe our peer-to-peer -peer is one of the best user interfaces uh, out there in the peer-to-peer -peer market. Um, if, uh, and it's often what I hear from experts uh, who look at it and they say this is the, the user interface and, uh, for the end user is really phenomenal. Um, but here's an example of uh, one of our clients, New Hope Ministries, and their peer-to-peer -peer page. And what customizable display names does is it allows the donor to, uh, to customize the name that gets displayed. And I'll show you what I mean there. So they go to donate. They would click on the donate button and that would take them to the form they fill out. So they, you see they have free first name, last name, email, and such. Now it used to be, and you might not be able to see this, but I'll, sh I'll blow it up in a second. How would you like your name displayed next to your donation? My contact name or anonymously? Well, what we did was we made it a little bit more fun and a little bit more custom configurable. Now, uh, when people log on to make a donation, how would you like your name displayed? My contact name, anonymously, or type name, display name, and then you can write whatever you want because Christina might be Grandma Christina, and that's how uh, Christina would want to be known when her, rank, when her donation displays because everybody knows her as Grandma Christina. And as you can see here, once that happens, that's what will be visible. So it allows a little bit more personalization and uh, really enhances that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, experience. Um, just so you know, this feature, it was part of the new release. But because peer-to-peer uh, -peer <coughs> and the main uh, management uh, console get updated at different times, this is not part of the new peer-to-peer -peer release. So this will be coming any day, but uh, just wanted you to be aware. You will not see this yet, but this is going to be uh, here very shortly. So adding posts on volunteer management, number four. Um, many of you have used the volunteer component, uh, which is pretty new to Charity Engine or certainly new in the level that we've been able to create it. Um, what it does is when you have an event, you've created an event, you've got registered attendees and such, you now can create the volunteers for that event and post that they will be responsible for managing. So uh, here's an example on the left. Um, we see a screen that shows food and refreshments help, front desk registration, floor runners. Uh, and by floor runners, I mean in the example that maybe you have an event where there are volunteers out on the floor there to provide help or assistance throughout the evening or the event. Um, so the first thing you do is create the post type. That will be across any event you have. Um, you would might want to create these general post types. So as we see here, we've got food and refreshment help, front desk registration, and floor runners. Um, if you want to manage, obviously you go to the actions button and do it. Uh, if you wanted to create a new volunteer post, you would go to create new. Um, and then when you do go to create new, it'll simply show you name. So we can add whatever we want, maybe, um, uh, maybe uh, infirmary, right? You have a table that's just for uh, first aid. We call it first aid. We would enter first aid. And now we have a volunteer type that's first aid. So once you have the types um, in the system, uh, you're now going <coughs> to add the post for a particular event. So in this case, we're looking at uh, 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 the post for um, food and refreshments is the type, and the post is going to be at the ballroom table. So maybe you have food and refreshments, you have one in the ballroom, you have one outside, you have one downstairs in a green room for certain VIPs. You want to be able to manage, manage those different posts, but they're all food and refreshments. So this one is ballroom table. The event you see we've selected is the PMI Billion Plus DOS 2015. You can see I'm using our client uh, there for a lot of these examples. Um, the name is ballroom table. Type is refresh, food and refreshment help. We at, make it active. Location, um, that has to do with the location of the event, and that option will play down. We're sending the POL conference, point select conference. And then needed, you see the number 10. That's how many people you're going to need at that particular post. So here we're saying for the ballroom table, for the food and refreshment, we're going to need 10 volunteers. We update that or create it, and then we're good to go. Um, so 
That's the first thing we do. The second thing with the volunteer posts is, um, now you saw on the right here, the general tab and the volunteers tab, here we see the inverse uh, presentation. So now we see the volunteers tab. And until you create uh, any, they're going to be blank. The first one we did is I created uh, myself. So I went in to hit create. Um, and you can see <laughs> what someone in there, uh, what it displays, the contact name, um, the post ballroom table, the type, the event, the location, uh, and then they're, they're confirmed. Um, you can have uh, applied and confirmed. That way when people have, you talk to them and they're definitely going to be there. Um, so that's an example of what it looks like from the volunteers tab. So let's say we have a new volunteer. Um, so Lee Kessler, obviously, we had me right here. We want to add somebody else. So we go to new um, or create. And we're going to enter the event, the post, their status. And then we could search their contact. Either we find someone who's already in the system. I was already in the system. It was easy to find me. We could search the contact. Um, or you can generate a new person right there. And then you'll go create a contact record. And then they'll be here. And this goes back to one of the great things about Charity Engine as a tool is that because all of this is integrated, these people who are volunteering and signing up to volunteer, you also know if they've created a peer-to-peer -peer page for you or how many donations they've made, how many emails you've sent them that they've clicked. And what that does is that gives you that incredible donor-centric view of everybody in your universe. Uh, obviously, most people on this uh, webinar are Charity Engine users, but it's a reminder of what makes this really special tool is that you have a full understanding now of everybody there. Uh, and the last is volunteer posts. So now we're looking at the post. We've registered me. I'm one of the volunteers. Um, and now we see how it displays here. So details, ballroom table, the type, and so forth. Needed, we need 10 volunteers. We have one. And that allows us to keep track of, OK, where do we need help? Uh, where do we need more people? <laughs> and allows you to manage the volunteers in event. So that's volunteers. If you have more questions about volunteers, please reach out to myself or to client services. We want you to understand the tool. We want you to be able to use it to its maximum ability. But this is a, this is a good start to understand. Uh, and the last great feature is queryability and opportunities. And I bring this uh, to your attention because opportunities is a very new feature in Charity Engine. And it's really our version of moves management. Um, people have been asking for it for a long time. And now it is part of the Charity Engine platform. So before I even go to explain the queryability, <laughs> because that's a new feature, I want to explain to you uh, opportunities in general. So um, opportunities gives major gifts and grants managers or, or just development people in general the tools to implement processes and workflow for opportunity cultivation of any kind. And that's what makes this really special, is the fact that it's completely configurable by you. We're not guiding you through a magic wizard. We're not saying this is how you have to do it. What we've done is created a tool that takes the processes you have in place and want to make work for yourselves continued and make that part of how Charity Engine operates. Um, opportunities can be segmented according to type, track, stage, and step. And um, if you look here in this example, uh, the concept is simplified. We're showing a process for tying your shoe. Seems kind of elementary, obviously, but it's a good way to understand how you move someone through a process. Um, by uh, Here we have Steve, Steve Titus, shoe tire, and we have his contact information. He's in the system. Solicitor, that refers to the person who's in charge of managing his, uh, his, his cultivation. And the step he's at. Here we're at laced laces. So um, th th that's the step he at, he's at. Um, and if we were to move him on, we go to the next one, we go to click move, and that will move him along. Activities ties in your calendar on your front page of uh, your management console on your dashboard, which shows your calendar of activities. That'll apply there too. So if you have a meeting with Steve to show him lace the laces, uh, that will be there. Um, we're going to be doing a much more uh, in-depth uh, webinar around opportunities to explain it. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. But I wanted to show you, if any of you are currently using it, um, uh, what we can do. And if you're not, just to give you a sense of what's there. Um, so to understand it, if you do go in and play around and try to understand it yourself, uh, there are four elements to opportunities. There's high-level categorization, which is type. Um, so you might, a type might be grants, major gifts, estate and wills. Um, a secondary categorization, categorization of that is track, uh, what track you have somebody on. So maybe they're applying for a grant. Maybe they're reapplying for a grant. 
If that is a different process, that allows you to put them on a different track, which would have different steps and stages, which leads us to steps and stages. Uh, steps are actions you would take in order to accomplish a goal. So an example is a cold call, sending a cold email, sending an intro packet, scheduling a meeting, and so forth. Those are steps you take to move somebody along the process. Stages are categorizations of those steps and tell you where someone is in the process. If you're cold call or sending cold emails, you're kind of in prospect creation. If you're sending an intro packet after a conversation, you've got an engaged prospect. Um, now, these are all custom configurable. I created this how I wanted it to look and, and make sense. You make it however you want. You can have hundreds of types. You can have one type. You can have hundreds of tracks. You can have one track. The flexibility is based on how much reporting you want to do. And again, there will be a, a, a webinar coming up about that. But in the meanwhile, I just wanted to explain it to you because that will explain our next thing, which is the query ability. So those of you who've done queries and built queries, this will look familiar to you. Um, opportunities is in contact, so you'll be in the contacts portion of creating a query. Um, and you can see it's just a drop down right there uh, of available, just like contacts, first name, last name, last gift, organization name, and all the different queryable functions. And I believe there's some 4,000, 5,000 or something uh, in, our, in our capabilities. Um, this just shows you a little bit, uh, blows it up a little bit and shows you what you have. So now you can search on closed probability or query on closed probability, create at date, current step name, estimated close date, a lot of different functions, opportunity stage, opportunity type, owner name, target name, type. All of that is queryable and filterable, and as such, it's also displayable in an export. So then you can see with your queries who's at what stage. Um, you can look at that in the reports and in the system, but if you do have queries built around it, uh, that's where that would be. So those are our five awesome highlights from this uh, particular charity and release. Our next release, and as you know, we do based on arcade games, uh, Joust and Kung Fu Master. Uh, that will be released June 11th, and our webinar for that will be June 17th, so please be on the lookout so we can show you what we've got there. Um, also want to let point out Wednesday, June 10th, we're doing a webinar uh, along with the Chronicle of Philanthropy. Um, so it's a, a sponsored event through them. How to Catch a Whale and Other Nice Size Fish. A Technologist's Guide to Donor-Centric Fundraising. We're going to talk about how we use technology to really create a donor-centric strategy. And uh, to register for that, go to charityengine.net forward slash COP webinar, and that will take you to the registration page to sign up for that event. So again, um, thank you for your time, everybody. I'm going to look real quick and see, uh, see some of the questions we have here, and if I can answer them. Questions is the toughest part of this go-to webinar system, so I have to uh, go slowly through it. Okay, we answered that one. Is there a way to add a volunteer form for this so people apply? Um, the volunteer form would be through, uh, the same way you create any form, it would be a volunteer form, and you would structure your fields to match your needs for that. There is no stock form for volunteers, but what you saw there was uh, the configuration on the back end, and you can create your fields which automatically populate that. Um, so if you had forms training, uh, you may be able to figure out how to do that. If you had not, you may want to schedule forms training with our team. Um, or if you would like us to build the forms to that, our professional services group is available for that as well. Reach out to Patty and her team, uh, and they would be happy to talk to you about what we can do there. Um, Will this webinar be recorded for those of us who can't make it? Well, if you ask the question, I feel like you made it, but of course it's going to be recorded. And we're actually going to start posting these on YouTube. So, uh, so um, that sh they should be up by the end of the week, so look out for those. And um, Let's see, it says, are you able to send this out as a link so people can sign up on their own? I'm assuming you mean the Chronicle of Philanthropy webinar. Uh, we will be sending out our own marketing around it. You can sign it up. You can do it uh, at, at philanthropy.com. But uh, again, you can always just do it. Go to charityengine.net forward slash COP webinar. If I misunderstood the question, I apologize. And please uh, reach out to me and I... Yes, that was a, okay. Uh, that, will, that will be taped as well, recorded. So you can, um, you can uh, see that. 
Um, Oh, the volunteer pages. Are you able to send this out as a link so people can sign up on their own? Okay, I think what you're saying is can you create a form that people can sign up to volunteer for the events? Yes. Again, that's all in your configuration. You create your forms, send out a link. If I'm not answering that properly, please reach out to me. My, um, my email is lee, L-E-I-G-H, dot Kessler. Actually, you can just marketing at charityengine.net will get to me as well. So any questions you have following up that I didn't answer, uh, go to marketing.charityengine.net. Um, those appear to be all the questions. Folks, I, I really appreciate your time. Um, I hope this was educational, and I hope um, what we're really trying to do, as I've mentioned in the last webinar, we really are trying to do our best to make sure that Charity Engine is usable and exciting and that you're constantly seeing the progress and things you can do. Uh, it is not a stagnant concept. So I, I hope you're on board with that. I do encourage you to join us for this webinar charityengine.net forward slash COP webinar. I think you'll have great appreciation for the ideas of how technology can play a great role in donor-centric fundraising. I'm Lee Kessler. Thanks for your time. And we look forward, have a great summer, everybody. And we'll see you in a month for the uh, Joust and Kung Fu Master release.